Good morning, church. It's great to be able to share with you this morning, and I want to reflect briefly this morning and then later on in the week around some of the things that Sean had mentioned and spoke about in her message that led to the end of our, our series in Philippians. And she spoke and then showed the image of the thimble, the cup, the bucket and the reservoir, didn't she? As she was focusing on Philippians 4.19, where Paul said, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And she spoke about that reservoir, but she spoke about the dam and that image that God had given to her, didn't she? About taking a hammer to the dam and so often, the church over the period of all its history has been like that dam that trickles out the water of God's grace when God seeks the torrent. But there are places in the world and there are seasons and times when that was different. When the Methodist revival, for instance, in, in, in England in the, uh, in the 18th century, 19th century, and what's taking place in China and the revivals that have happened across the world and, and are continuing to happen, Places that are really quiet where they're seeing the move of God move very powerfully. And it's as if a hammer's been taken to the dam and the torrent of God's grace has been poured out. And I don't know about you, but that's what I dream after. That's what I yearn for. And maybe this morning there's something in your heart that starts to rise up and say, Yes, Lord, I need more. We need more to be able to see your purposes take place. And of course, God, if God is calling us to take hammers to the dam, then we need a godly perspective, don't we, that enriches our knowledge and that uh, changes and impacts our attitudes and behaviour. Because I don't know about you, I have so often taken to God a thimble and said, fill that, or my cup, fill my cup. And there's this transactional thing that takes place. God, if you will do this, then I will be able to do whatever it is you call me to. And that's not how God wants it. That's not the dream of God. The Philippians are given sacrificially in worship to the living God. And out of that, Paul said, and my God will meet all your needs. My first message ever was to not put God in a box. And uh, I thought I was being original at the time. Of course, I wasn't. But I focused on Isaiah 40. And in that passage, we read so much of how the Israelites have been in exile. And this word of comfort came. Comfort, comfort my people. And then God expands their vision of who he is by asking a whole series of questions. Listen to these questions. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or instruct the Lord as his counsellor? or instruct the Lord as his counsellor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him, and who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path of understanding? And of course, in all those answers, we say, well, it's not us, it's not me, Lord. You are too immense. You see, when our vision of God is rooted in his immense love, our attitudes change, and it impacts our behaviour. And I'm urging us today, I'm urging us from this point on, to not have a transactional view of God. Oh Lord, do this for me and I'll do that. Or Lord, will you do this? I need you to fill my cup. I wonder if we can have a vision of God that's rooted so immensely in his love that then we are changed and transformed and situations change and transform and hammers go to the dam. Paul said in Ephesians 3 verse 20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. There's a power church that is at work in us that can do immeasurably more than all we could ever ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us and today before we put up any obstructions before we raise the brickwork of our dams about that let us just sit for a time in that truth 
and seek God to expand our vision so much of him that we will truly begin to believe that we serve an immeasurably more God who has the power at work in us that's the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And if we truly start to walk in that, the, hams to the, the hammers sorry, to the dams will start to knock and knock and knock and break and break and break. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we are so overwhelmed by this vision of you. This vision who says, who's measured the hollows of all the, the waters of all the earth in the hollows of his hand? Who has weighed the mountains in the scales? None of that could be from us, O oh Lord. None of that can come from us. It is all about you. And Lord, today we choose to believe that you are able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask, that we could ever seek, that we could ever even imagine. You are the God in whom we serve. And Lord, may we go out in that knowledge today. In Jesus' name. Amen.